Hello and welcome to News Click. The pandemic of the COVID-19 has resulted in a huge increase in the child labor across the country as well as across the globe. To discuss more about the implications of uh, such increase, we have with us Mr. Dr. Balamurugan, a child right activist. Welcome, sir. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, to begin with, uh, what do you think is the basic reason, uh, the fundamental reason for the increase in child labor? So, uh, simply the people will say that poverty is the major reason. But from our experiences, we realize that poverty is not the reason. It's one among the reasons. There are several other reasons. Because when you talk about child labor, we talk about push and pull factors. Some of the things are pushing towards the work. Some of the things are you know, pulling them uh, towards the industry. So basically, if you see social, economic, and geographical backwardness, number of family members in the family, lack of access to education, and quality of education, because the schools play a major role in uh, increasing the child labor. If you, see, you know, if you see the tribal area, in most places, the children do not have access to the quality education. It is resulted in dropout. Once they are dropped out, then they will uh, end up with child labor. That's the thing. Then poverty, when you say poverty, is the one among the reasons. However, if you see the reasons for the poverty, it could be the addiction, alcoholic addiction uh, of the parent, or some kind of money drainage within the uh, family, or health issues. So chronic health diseases. So they, will, they may not have enough fund to uh, support that. So this kind of thing. Then... Uh, family tradition also is uh, play a major role. Another important thing, uh, the discrimination between boys and girls. Now, if you see the proportion of girls dropped out from the schools, it's really increased. Uh, they Once they are dropped out, either they are sent to work or getting married. So these are the things. Some of the things that attracts them towards the industry, like cheap labor. In most places, the children are preferred because they can they can exploit them and also they can pay very less wage for more hours of work. And they give false promises stating that you'll be given these facilities and all the, you know, uh, with the entertainment, uh, sports, everything will be given. But whereas when they ended up, their living and uh, working condition will be very poor. And uh, these are the uh, reasons for the child labor. We cannot quote just one reason as a, uh, for the child labor. There are combination of factors, varies from region to region. If you go to the triple belt, the reasons will, you know, combination of different factors. Geographical location itself is reason for the uh, child labor. So we have to see in a comprehensive manner. Uh, sir, as you said that uh, a lot of promises are being given to the students, I mean, children who are, uh, you know, brought to job by big companies. Uh, one major sector, one major industry is the uh, different industries across the state where you find a lot of child labor. Uh, big corporate houses, garment industry in the western part of uh, Tamil Nadu where the child labor has uh, you know, very huge presence. What do you think is the reason for this particular criteria? See, there are, uh, uh, again, you know, if you see the children, the, there is an issue in the definition of child labor. If you take ILO, they give a different definition. If you come to India, they have different definition. They define the children below 14 years, then you know others are adolescent laborers. They can be engaged as per the rules. So they take this as a leverage. For example, Factory Act 1948 clearly says that the child completed 15 years of age can work as an adult. It means eight hours they can work. The policy so itself this, itself. yeah, it's a problem because the national policy for children 2013 defines clearly the children below 18 years are children. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child it clearly defines. Folks Act it clearly defines you know below 18 are the children. Junior Justice Act it also whereas there are a lot of lacuna in the definition itself. So as far as uh, Tamil Nadu India is concerned. This segment, the people in 15 to 18, they are more vulnerable for the reason that the schools push them out. For example, if you take the high school, higher secondary school, how many schools have proper toilet facilities? If you check, it's very poor. That in rural area, I have witnessed several uh, schools, I visited several schools. 
for the reason they are unable to manage the menstruation cycle they do not have any facilities they just quit the school because going in the open space is an embarrassment for them so they quit the school so what happens once they are dropped out they will be trapped by the agents so there is no ethical recruitment practices as such in the textile and garment industries and they sh- there are a lot of issues uh, around that they they are uh, i do not blame the companies they engage the agents the agents give bo- false promises for which the principal employer is also liable they cannot say that you know i do not know about it so there should be a proper recruitment practices or standard operating procedure should be in place so that this can be prevented so that's the reason the major sector if you go and see the textile and garment industry we are decade almost two decade ago ago two decades ago if you see the average age of the worker it was 40 45 now it is 23 22 23 so most more than 60 percentage of the girl girls are below 18 years so this is the current scenario in tamil nadu as far you referred the education the schools being a being a one reason behind the increase in child labor so presently we have a policy which is you know which claims to be student friendly which is called as the national education policy do you think that this policy will further increase the number of child laborers or it, will it help in any way to reduce the child labor so the uh, see the present national education policy should be seen in a comprehensive way so i appreciate the people who written it because all the adjectives are you know like very 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 well drafted in the sense the wordings are good if you actually see the intention of the policy it will push the children out of the school i'll quote few examples in the policy whenever you develop a policy they will develop the policy based on certain principles if you see the principles right to education is not at all given there so in one place they mentioned that the children will be uh, the compulsory education will be ensured till 12 years of education or you know, 12th grade the modalities were not given whereas if we see the methodology they are dividing like they will have public examination in third grade fifth grade eighth grade like no stupid can uh, do like this kind of policy already the problem in india is that the children are enrolled children are enrolled if you see the enrollment ratio yes 100% enrolled the issue is retention of children in the schools so already new if you see 10th and plus 2 grade students they have mental stress you know depression due to exams marks and other things if you put that pressure on the child who is studying in third grade how they will cope it up it's very very difficult so naturally what will happen third standard there will be drop out fifth grade there will be drop out eighth grade there will be drop out that's one thing the second thing they are talking about three language formula right the as a report annual statistical education survey report says that the children studying in fifth grade are unable to read the tamil Uh, tamil book of second grade student just imagine their mother tongue is tamil they are unable to read second standard tamil book or third standard tamil book so they are already uh, english is the second language already there is a problem in the system if you force another language see we are not against uh, learning hindi yeah even if you learn 10 languages we are happy but it should not be against the rights of the children so when you introduce three language formula already they are suffering with tamil and english they are unable to cope it up with how they will learn another language so this has to be taken care you no know? lot of lot of lacunas in the policy i tell you if the policy is implemented in its spirit after 10 years you can witness the increase in the child labor increase in child marriage increase in child trafficking that will be the result of uh, this policy we can uh, we, we can definitely tell from our own experiences so when we check the website of the child welfare and protection department as well the 
position of the chairperson is vacant the members are vacant we could not uh, contact any people to get details about uh, the uh, status of uh, the child labor and all those things what do you think is the government uh, doing in this particular case when we check the website from april and may these uh, important key positions are vacant and many nodal officers positions are also vacant in a lot of districts so what what can we understand from this situation uh actually you know the child and uh, the, the commission act was uh, commission for protection of child rights act was enacted in 2005 it's a central act based on that the state has to enact an act just just see 2005 the central act came into place whereas we we enacted the act in uh, tamil nadu only in 2012 see they made rules only in 2012 it took 7 years so while creating these structures uh, we appreciate that they have done it but they have to understand the role of state child uh, protection commission so as of now you know they, they have to monitor the juvenile justice act they have to monitor right to education act they have to monitor uh, prevention of children from uh, sexual offences act they have to monitor uh, child marriage prohibition act 2006 so they have they are any any other issues related to the children they have to monitor right they have to identify the gaps in the implementation they need to orient they need to train the officials and other stakeholders they need to organize consultations lot of things they can do but from the beginning it does not have the autonomy it's an independent body but it's not have its own independence they cannot act on its own because this has been under one department controlled by the particular department what we suggest you know human rights commission how it functions the same status is given by the statutory act you know is for formation of scpc why it is not functioning the thing is it is not independent the second thing is about the chairperson and members right uh, who, for this kind of commission if you appoint a retired high court judge it will be useful right those who are in the bureaucratic structure they will follow only those structure right they may they will not think beyond that so what we suggest if we, if we, if you want to make it more efficient appoint a person who is retired from high court just like human rights commission national human rights commission if you appoint then it will add value when they send the summon others will resent because it's just retired it, it has its own value the third thing about the infrastructures see they have to monitor all these things there should be separate division within the system we don't have any system if you see the allocation that's very peanut if you see the allocation from other states like kerala telangana so they are allocating in crores but here it's only 20 lakhs very 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 minimum budget and if you see the salary of the scpc are very embarrassing situation for the chairperson 25000 rupees right getting lesser than the driver of the car provided to them see how that when you say the chairperson they they have the authority in telangana they are paid as uh, on equal to the chief secretary rank so they will have the weightage you no know, when they send something immediately it will be responded then uh, there is no advocates you know, there is no panel and also if we see the website if we go and see the website you can verify till 2014 what they have been doing there was no record at least for 2017 18 19 there are some kind of uh, reports right so they don't have infrastructures though if you want to and also uh that uh, the it's like you know we should not think in terms of political whatever the ruling party they need to think that this is the issue of children if there are prominent persons those who are already committed for the uh, children issue they should be appointed the members they cannot claim their travel how they will travel to understand the issue just imagine they cannot claim their travel most of their pills are still pending there so from january there is no member from march i think uh, sir, from january there is no chairperson from uh, march there is no member right what are the issues they don't have proper records and 
if you want to make it very functional first of all right it should not be a politically motivated position the high court retained judges should be appointed and the second thing infrastructure you know proper infrastructure with all facilities uh, you know it should be differently abled uh, uh, friendly now you cannot it's in the first floor the differently abled children they cannot go and access it and there is no even you know if, if you go and see the chairperson or if you want to have a meeting there is no chair for uh, accommodating the visitors so basic infrastructure should be made in kerala there are 41 employees in state commission whereas in tamil nadu there are only nine people just imagine the difference the population of kerala population of tamil nadu just compare it so how much employees we should have in the commission so that it has to be and also the with all intra like computers printers all this should be equipped and the chairperson and members should be treated with the dignity right the salary should be you know higher than like uh, secretary cadre or something they can consider the fourth thing they should have a experts panel for monitoring pork side they should have an expert panel with uh, from uh, you know eminent uh, advocates for juvenile justice side they, so that they can follow it up with the cases now they are unable to do that so the and another thing the transparency so what they are doing there should be a dashboard number of complaints received once they enter it should be okay issue solved as and date right everything should be transparent and uh, allocation should be very high for tamil nadu uh, it's not for 2018 19 uh, the allocation was 68 lakhs 36000 only this is very it include it includes salary of the people so when we compare it's very very inadequate and also the state commission when we say it's not only uh, uh, looking at the issue it also has to work with other stakeholders like there are child welfare committees there are district child protection unit they have to monitor their functioning there are ngos they have to work with the ngos they have to work with the trade unions because they are dealing with the issues of ch- child laborers so they have to work with so they have to organize regular consultation if they have if they they are in touch with the ngos definitely ngos will support them but as of now there is no linkage between ngos and the scpcr so all these things uh, needs to be done uh what whatever i am telling here is to bring out the gap so that you know it will be an efficient uh, function so children will be uh, right, uh, protected in tamil nadu uh, sir one important uh, mechanism which has been long followed is the surprise visits of uh, the district authorities to the industry to check, uh, check the uh, child labor uh, is there anything which is going on uh, right now in that path because uh, the uh, information is that lot of vacancies are existing in the district nodal agencies which carries out or leads this kind of uh, surprise checks in the uh, company the, there are things are happening but the result is zero so far uh, the number of cases identified within the industry is very very less almost nil right uh, there are several reasons because when they employ and they when they employ the children so most children you know they they are certified by the doctor that uh, the age is above 15 or something they'll certify and they are qualified to work as an adult that's the thing you know what we suggest we have been advocating with the government to ensure that all the children are uh, the age, age should be based on their cert- school certificate because almost all the children now enrolled in tamil nadu definitely they would have studied up to fifth standard so that should be based on the thing but other and other uh, uh, doctor certificate has been given as approved that's one thing i am not uh, accusing all the employees there are very good people uh, they employ only the children above they do not engage the girls only girls uh, the age category below 18 they are not engaging there are several mills we can witness it's a good practice they have eth- ethical recruiting practices but most places it happens like you know below some uh, 18 or in case the uh, false certificate has been produced so its verification is very difficult and uh, just imagine the number of workers or workforce available with the government 
one person for 500 factories <laughs> just imagine 518 or something if, if i am correct how can they visit they don't have the mechanism so they have to see that it's you know decentralized at the uh, block level or panchayat level like that otherwise it cannot be done so there should be a separate uh, uh, mechanism to monitor the child level and also schools are there they are maintaining records under the emis education management information system they know how many children are uh, dropped out from school but i tell you in most places now 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 you can verify from tiruvannamalai the children from uh, you know when uh, children from jawad hills and from uh, vellimalai from vilupuram kalvarayan hills from salem they work in cotton fields in salem right now if you go and see they will they start their work in the 6 till uh, evening 6 they will work if you go and see their uh, school records you cannot find it right so there are a lot of lacuna available so what we suggest when they employ the children there should be uh, uh, school certificate as age proof otherwise don't employ and also we advocate for don't employ the children below 18 years you know there are a lot of girls or women are available so they can take them so it's not happening so and also the government should uh, strategize uh, they have all data that's a thing like child development index they have developed state planning commission or uh, you know they have child development index it clearly says ramna vellur krishnagiri tiruvannamalai and adiyam they are below the state average in child development so the children in this area are vulnerable for child labors it's clear so they have to have a clear strategy for uh, uh, for the particular region with the other stakeholders otherwise it's very difficult to control the child labor in uh, any industry